Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are on the globe. Welcome to first virtual DevConf. My name, as the slide says, is Alon Mureine, and I work for Synopsys, where I manage R&D for seekers, Node.js and .NET agents. If you haven't heard about Seeker, or rather haven't heard about Seeker yet, Seeker is probably the best IS solution out there today. But as fascinating as IS may be, it's just not my topic today. So this is the last time I'm going to mention it. Instead, today I want to talk about security awareness specifically security awareness for developers. So before I go into things, I just want to set expectations correctly. <clears throat> well, okay, I see the slides are lagging a bit. So I just want to set expectations correctly. Listening to this talk will not make you a security expert. In fact, no 30 minute talk would make you a security expert. What I do hope to achieve today, though, is to spark your interest in security, to raise awareness to security, and to help you get to, to a mindset, if you don't have one of these already, a mindset of thinking about security during your day job as you could. So in the information security industry, we like to say that security is everyone's responsibility. This is 100% true. I do not dispute this for one small second. But I believe that it all has to start with developers. <clears throat> Although security is everyone's responsibility, the, the process often starts with developers. And if we as developers don't introduce security flaws to begin with, if we think about security as we're coding and avoid security mistakes from, from the get-go, we can make everyone else's job a whole lot easier. This is especially correct, or especially true in the post uh, DevOps quote unquote revolution where developers are empowered to come up with new features on your products, code them, test them, or more often than not lie about testing them, and then push them straight to production. So in in such organizations, if developers are not aware of security and don't approach development with a security mindset, no one else will do this. So security is an absolute must for us. <clears throat> Problem is not everyone can be a security expert. And in fact, I don't think everyone should be a security expert. But just starting with awareness can take us a long way. Enter OWASP. OWASP stands for the Open Web Application Security Project. This is an organization devoted to promoting awareness of security, to promote knowledge of security, and to promote secure development practices. Now, uh, it's, it's in the name, the, operate, the operative word here is web, but first of all, if we're completely honest, in today's day and age, if your application, if your work um, interacts with the outside world in some way, shape or form, chances are there is web involved somewhere there be it an HTML, JavaScript, whatever, UI, or REST APIs over HTTP, the concept of 
web is is there web has long since stopped being your personal page on gear cities or whatever and second e even though i am going to discuss web today the good news is that most if not all of these concepts are easily transferable so even if you are not a web developer or web development is not part of your day job in any way shape or form the concepts here are still meaningful and are still useful hopefully to every developer specifically today i want to talk about the OWASP top 10 list this is a list that gets updated every couple of years in fact they're in the process of updating it again and they were kind enough not to release an update between the time I sat down and wrote this presentation to the time I'm presenting it. So today I'll be talking about the OSP Top 10 2017 list. But regardless of the revamping it goes through every couple of years, this is a top 10 list of the most, the 10 most influential, most common, most impactful security vulnerabilities that we see in the world. <clears throat> Just to clarify, this is not a list of CVEs. This is not a list of specific security vulnerabilities. It is more a list of concepts, the top 10 things you should keep in mind while developing. Not to say that if you go over and tick the boxes for each and, every, each and every of these 10 categories, your application will be 100% safe. I don't believe anything can be 100% safe, but it's a really good place to start. Unfortunately, I do not have the time to go in depth through, to in, excuse me, I do not have the time to discuss in depth all of these top 10 categories. In fact, each of these can easily deserve its own half hour talk, hour talk, whole day training session, you name it. So instead, I'm going to focus on my own top three. Not to say, not to say that the other seven aren't impactful, aren't dangerous, aren't something you need to keep in mind, but I decided to focus on these three for two reasons. First of all, these three in my mind are the top three that are really solely a developer's responsibility. And if we as developers do not address these three issues, chances are no one will or could do it for us. Second, these three are probably the easiest to demo. It's been a long day and I feel a bit selfish, so I'm going to take the easy way out. Now, for, all, for each of these three, I'm going to discuss them. I'm going to dem demo a horribly written application that has this vulnerability. And again, I emphasize these are horribly written applications. I will share the source code. It's under the MIT license. Please do not paste it into your applications. These are intentionally vulnerable applications. Anyway, I will demo them. I will show these vulnerabilities and I will discuss how to overcome them. All of my demos today are going to be in Node.js for a couple of ways. First of all, Node.js is open source, so on brand here at DevCon. Second, Node.js is JavaScript. So even if you are not a Node.js developer, any web developer should feel comfortable with the syntax here. And to be completely honest, even if you have never seen JavaScript before, this is pretty straightforward syntax. I'm not using any bells and whistles. So hopefully it will be easy to understand for anyone listening 
even if you are not familiar with JavaScript. So that was an extremely long introduction. Let's get into things. The first category of vulnerabilities I want to discuss is A1, injection. Now, chances are you've heard about injection attacks. Specifically, you've most probably heard about SQL injection attacks. SQL injection is in fact so famous, I think you'll be hard pressed to find a talk about application security that does not discuss SQL. So famous, it has its own XKCD comic strip. But since my goal here today is to raise awareness, I'm not going to discuss SQL injection. Instead, I want us to consider injection in the broadest terms possible. Injection or an injection attack is any scenario where your application receives input from the outside world, untrusted input, which is any input in fact, and uses it in a way where the application assumes it's just text or something benign, but due to some special character or characters, this payload, this input gains syntactic or semantic meaning. That's a mouthful. Let's see a demo. So I have here a basic login form, or rather the backend handler for login form. As you may notice, this login form operates on the honor system. It accepts any combination of username or password, which is, of course, a horrible security practice. Never do the system. But for the demo's sake, we will use the honor login system. And once a user is logged in, <clears throat> we will log the fact that they have logged in using our enterprise grade logging system, which is just pointing to the console. Let's see the slide. Here, a really ugly login form, because to be completely honest, I'm not a very good web developer. Nonetheless, it does work, and if I <clears throat> input my username and password, I can log in and I'll get a log message that says alone logged in. Now I can, of course, exploit the form itself, but it's not always convenient. So instead, I will use curl to send a payload which contains a line break backslash n. And when I send this, two log messages alone logged in and uranium logged in, which of course make absolutely sense, I've just sent one single request. So by using a line break, which has the semantic meaning of a new log message, I was able to inject or falsify a log message. Now, this is benign, this is an application that doesn't do anything, and no one ever looks at these logs. But if you had a real application with real logs and monitoring system and events triggered by this monitoring system, the ability to falsify or inject a log message can really cause a whole lot of noise. Avoiding injection attacks is, well, easy in theory, not always easy in practice, but the cardinal rule is we never trust any input from the outside. We do not trust our users. Input is potentially malicious. So if you can avoid any input from the outside, that's excellent. Unfortunately, my systems can't because the reason we have these systems is to get input from the outside and do stuff with it. If we cannot avoid it, we have to sanitize this input. We have to think about the context it's used in, think about what 
special characters could gain syntactic or semantic meaning and then escape them somehow. Now, I'm sure everyone listening to this is super smart and you can all implement your own sanitizers. I'm sure you can do this, please don't. Unless you have a really, really good reason to invent a better wheel, don't reinvent the wheel. Every framework, every programming language, every programming environment should have its own popular battle tested proof ways to sanitize your input against any number of places that can be abused or injected. So find the right library and please use it. Let's move on. So that was injection and perhaps a few too many words. The next category of <clears throat> vulnerabilities I want to discuss are XML external entities or XXE. Well, I started programming in the Iron Age. XML was everywhere. In the later years, it kind of fell from grace, but it's still definitely out there, definitely being used, and can definitely be a source of security vulnerabilities. <clears throat> the cliff note for those of you who aren't deeply familiar with XML is that XML is awesome. XML has a ton of features which developers sometimes really like, which have a ton of power behind them. <clears throat> but as Peter Parker or other Ben has taught us, with great power comes great responsibility and that could be some such a thing as too much power sometimes. Specifically, I want to discuss XML entities, XML external entities. As programmers, we don't like to copy paste, we like to reuse code. And XML entities let you do an XML. XML entities allow you to define entities in the document and then reference them in various places in that document in order to avoid duplicating entries. Now, that sounds like a good idea, but, <clears throat> well, let's see this in practice. I have here a very basic web application or web API that receives an XML payload, passes it, and returns the text of the name element. Sounds straightforward, right? Let's see this. Let's see what can happen. So this time I'm not going to offend your eyes with my ugly front end skills. I will show you though that I can use curl. Hopefully you can see this to send a payload which has a root element, a name element, and then it's a long. <clears throat> and this web API will return name is a long. Now, if I use curl to send a more interesting XML with an external entity, I get back name is a secret. Or well, name is, sorry, this is a secret. Now, this is not the path of the entity that I defined. This is the actual content of the file. Now, again, here, this is benign because it's a system nobody uses. But by sending an XML payload to a web API, I was able to get the content of a text file. This isn't even an XML file. This has nothing to do with the application and just happens to be sitting there in the file system. Now, what would have happened if I were not the security conscious developer that I am, 
and I would have run this application as root, which nobody should ever do, but people do, of course. And what if my payload wasn't a path to this file, but an entity referencing file colon slash slash so file colon slash 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 etc slash past wd well a whole big oops right so even though xml is not as prominent as it used to be it can definitely still pose a security risk luckily avoiding xxe attacks is not that hard first and foremost if you don't use X xml or at least don't use XML to communicate with the outside world, you don't get your XMLs from external sources, you're good. If you do use XML, well, first of all, see if you can stop using XML. <laughs> if you can't, double check your parser. A lot of parsers don't allow external entities at all. So for this use case, great. A lot of parsers that do allow external entities don't allow them by default or could be configured at least not to allow them. So if you can tweak the parser configuration to disallow entities or disallow external entities at least, again, problem solved. If you can do neither of these things, you have absolutely no choice, no other choice but to write some code and to introduce some mechanism like an inclusion list or an exclusion list inclusion list is always better to filter and make sure that your entities only access the files that they are allowed to that's kind of a pain to do but the good news is a it's possible and b hey for all developers here we like writing code so not that bad. The last category of, <clears throat> of vulnerabilities I want to discuss today are cross-site scripting, A7 cross-site scripting or XSS. Now, cross-site scripting is kind of sort of an injection attack, but it is so widespread, so ubiquitous to web development that it got, got gets its own category. Cross-site scripting is any numbers, number of ways where an attacker sends a payload to a website, a web application, <clears throat> and this, this payload, instead of being treated as benign text is somehow executed by a victim's browser. So this payload becomes interpreted as HTML, as JavaScript usually, but generally speaking as any payload that a victim's browser, browser can interpret. Even VBScript in some browsers, we will not mention their names. Yeah. <clears throat> Sounds like a mouthful. Let's let's talk specifics. There are a number of ways to create XSS vulnerabilities. I'm going to show here a technique called stored XSS. In this technique, the attacker sends his his or her malicious payload. It is saved by the target application, for instance, in a database. And then in an unrelated time, when the victim browses the site, this application, this malicious payload is retrieved, in this case, from a database and executed by the victim's browser. Let's see some code. I have here a very simple comments form. Now, when you browse to it, you will see two things. First of all, a form asking you how is DevConf so far and allowing you to submit your comment. And listed chronologically 
all of the comments from previous users. The backend handle of this form is pretty straightforward. It just takes a comment and inserts it to a database. You will notice I'm using bind variables here, so this application is safe from the aforementioned SQL injection attack. But of course, this does nothing to prevent XSS attacks. Um, so, and just for for the sake of completeness, once this comment is inserted, the location is refreshed back to the form. Not really <clears throat> critical to to display this vulnerability, but just to explain the application you're seeing here. So let's see this in action. So as usual, I have an ugly form here because I'm not a very good web developer, but nonetheless, it does work. And if I put in that I think DevConf is great, I can submit it, the page is refreshed, and I get my comments back. As always, I could use this form to try and exploit the application, but it's much more convenient using curl. So I'll use curl, I'll send a payload which contains some HTML or a script tag, and in there is some inline JavaScript that refreshes the page's location. Next time the victim browses here, they will be redirected to the DevConf homepage. Like all the demos in this session, this is kind of harmless because, again, it's an application that so doesn't do anything. There's no imported data here. <clears throat> and my attack was to redirect to the DevConf home page, which, knock on wood, is a safe page. But if you think about it for a second, I got this page to execute. I got, sorry, a victim's browser to execute some arbitrary JavaScript. And instead of redirecting to the dev confirm page, I could have done all sorts of damage. <clears throat> so the defending against XSS kind of goes back to the injection playbook. If you can, don't take any input from the user. Usually you cannot. If input you have taken are taking from a user has any chance to be displayed in a browser, you have to sanitize it. And once again, please do not try to reinvent the wheel, although I'm sure everyone here is super smart and can do this. Find the sanitation library or feature that matches your application framework, your programming language, and put it to good use. Now, I think I'm running out of time, so <clears throat> let's summarize. <clears throat> we have seen here a couple, or we have seen here three of the top 10 hours. Well, sorry, we have seen three of the top 10 of the OWASP top 10 vulnerability list. This is not an exhaustive list, but I do hope it kind of sparked your, your interest and raised some awareness and <clears throat> made you feel like going out there and learning some more about security. As I said in the beginning, Security is everyone's responsibility, but it has to start with us developers. Sometimes because we are alone there, sometimes because even if we are not alone, if we can avoid introducing security vulnerabilities to begin with, it will make everyone else's life so, so much easier. The bad news is that we cannot all be security experts. The good news is that we don't have to. First of all, because awareness really goes a long way. 
Second of all, even if we're not experts, us developers are very, very good at using other people's knowledge, even that we are even in areas we are not experts in. Now that sounds kind of surprising, but think about it for a moment. I, for example, am not an expert in writing bug free code, but I can use other people's knowledge by implementing automated tools such as unit tests and component tests and system tests and integration tests and whatever tests <clears throat> to help me reduce the number of bugs. This will not be perfect, but this will drastically reduce the number of bugs in my software even before any QA engineer takes a look at it. Security should be treated with the same mindset. Now, this is not a sales pitch. I'm not going to advocate any to I will say that there are a bunch of really good security tools out there that can really help you develop more develop more secure applications. <clears throat> there are several different ways of doing this and several different phases in a different life cycle this might apply. But at the very least, the good tools will easily plug into your pipeline. So if your pipeline does not have any sort of security considerations, if you have a pristine pipeline that handles code quality with linters and files with tests but does nothing for your security nothing for your security you may just be overlooking a major part of your responsibility as a developer so find the tool or tools suit you and see how you integrate them into your CI. With that, I think I'm really running out of time. So <clears throat> I just want to share a couple of links. The OS top 10 project, which I've been discussing, the source code for all of my demos here, and in fact, for all of the, for the entire top 10 list is available in my GitHub. And once again, I cannot stress this more. It's intentionally bad code intentionally vulnerable please do not copy paste it to any application you care about and of course just to give credit where it's due the curl which i've been using throughout these demos with that i am really really running out of time so if there are any questions i'd happily take them Um, if they are not, I'll <clears throat> just take this opportunity to say thank you for listening, thank you for your time, and if anyone is interested in discussing these topics more, feel free to reach out to me, my email, my LinkedIn, over here in the chat, I'll be here for a couple of hours longer. Is kind of late in my part of the world, but shoot me up with an email or Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever, and I'll be happy to talk. And once again, thank you everyone for listening and thank you for your time. I'll be signing off. Thank you all once again.